Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for um, your participation and attendance at today's webinar. I uh, we got a great crowd and it looks like um, a couple other people are just joining on. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just a couple of things. My name is Steve Koenig and I work with uh, Handle IT, the creators and developers of Right Track Software. And thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. Uh, before we get started, just a couple of uh, bits of information. Um, I'm going to do my best to try to keep this uh, uh, no more than 45 minutes. That's what I targeted, uh, give or take, did a couple run-throughs, was a little over, a little short, so I'll look for 45 minutes, want to be respectful of your time, but thank you so much for participating. Um, at the very end of the webinar, there is a brief survey, uh, four or five questions. If you just take a few moments and um, fill that out, I really appreciate it. It just gives me some feedback and some insight into to how things are going um, from the webinar. And then finally, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so if somebody in your organization wanted to participate and wasn't able to, um, I can send a copy of that recording um, for you guys to view it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, oh, last piece of information. I am doing this all by myself, which is fine. Um, but it does make it a little difficult for me to answer questions. And so if you do have questions, feel free to enter them into the chat. I will do my best to address those at the very end if we have time. Here's my contact information, phone number and email address. Um, if you have any other questions that come up later, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. Um, be more than happy to, to have a quick conversation or just uh, email exchange asking and answering questions as well. So just some information about Right Track. We are a juvenile case management, youth management, facility management system. And so what we are, and that's kind of a lot of words to describe the same things, but people say, hey, I'm looking for a youth management system or a case management system. And so Right Track tries to accomplish all of those different things. But the focus of what we try to accomplish with Right Track is to take all your day-to-day -day operations and put them into one system. So not only are we managing um, your organization, but we're also managing the youth uh, in the facility as well. We are a web-based system, so if you have access to the internet, you have access to Right Track. Um, and especially at this time of our lives that we're dealing with pandemics and people being re working remotely and in and out of the office and so forth and so on, um, it, the advent, it's really advantageous to have something that doesn't tie you to your desk. It's mobile. Um, you can use it on your look at it on your phone. You can use it on a tablet, desktop, whatever um, suits your purposes. Security is tied to your uh, is role based. So um, depending on what your username and password determines what you have access to. So this demo is going to be from an administrator standpoint, which means we have access to everything in the system. However, we can put security around. So confidential information is confidential. Um, it, it's hidden from the line staff and we can control who has access to what. And then, as we had mentioned, serves as a single point of entry. So all the information on a youth is trying is being entered into the system. And then the benefit from that is not only do you know what's going on, um, it's more of an inclusive system, but it also uh, really is beneficial when we get to the reporting part. So, so using that data and learning um, what we can about what's going on in our facility, what's going on with the youth that we're serving as well. So just a little information about me that's not important, but a good introduction is I, I ran a juvenile facility for the state of Ohio. We were a paper-based facility and um, came to a quick realization that, that we needed to do a better job of not only managing the kids in our facility, but managing um, the operations and the data collection for the youth in our facility. Um, quick story of what changed really brought that to the forefront is I got a call from our Department of Youth Services saying we needed your seclusion hours for the previous year and we weren't tracking seclusion hours. Um, 
as a totality. We were tracking them, um, you know, per kid, but we weren't tracking it as a facility as a whole. Um, and so it took us, um, from my management team, it took us about an entire week's worth of time to sit down and go through and tally all of those uh, seclusion hours. And I learned two things. One, number one, uh, doing it on a paper-based system was a very inefficient way of doing it. And secondly, I was under the impression that we were doing a relatively good job of reducing our seclusion hours. But when I looked at it from a totalitary way, um, came to the quick realization that we had some work to do. So the data uh, goes back to what our philosophy is. Our data really showed us that um, one, we needed to do a better job of organizing and two, uh, really gave us some insight into how effective our program was or at that time was not. And so that uh, resulted in me looking for a software system, um, coming upon right track and then through a series of events actually um, leaving the facility and joining right track as well. But what our focus is, is really going back to our story is streamlining the process and the procedures. And so if I had had right track at the time, I could have answered that question in about three minutes, um, as opposed to spending hours and hours of time and really focus on reducing the duplicate data of entry. If we look at our processes and if you have an inefficient process, you find yourself repeating the same patterns over and over again. And right track really tries to eliminate. One of the things that's new in 2021 for right track is that we've updated our platform to meet really today's technology. It is the same system, same solution, solving the same problems, but it just looks a little differently to users. Um, and, and that is really to address the ever changing technology. And I know from experience that every every potential customer asks, uh, well, tell us about the experience because you know it takes time, it takes a financial commitment, it takes a um, you know a commitment from the staff to to move the, a project like this forward. And so I have a great webinar uh, recording available from one of our customers that just kind of speaks to. Uh, the implementation process and working with right track and the successes that they've had. So right track is the, the system, um, but we also have different modules as well. We have the probation module and the facility module really with the idea that if you are a court that has both probation and a facility, you can use one system to meet both of those needs today where our focus is just solely on the facility um, module as well within right track. And we have the system divided up into different um, modules within the right track facility system. So we'll start with the dashboards, um, the person management, which is really the demographic, the information about a youth. Right track is a little unique in how we do our data collection because right track is based off of the individual. So it's based off of the person. So you're entering information onto the kid and then including the admission information. Or in the case like if you're doing a probation system, you can enter the information onto the kid and then adding probation information and then adding admissions information as well. We also have a module for admission management. So this is the day-to-day -day operations of a detention. Um, incident management, uh, so incident reports. Um, and I'll show you in the demo how all of this kind of ties together. Group management, so if you're doing groups within your facility. And then the most important part of right track is the reporting. So taking all the information that we're entering into the system and then having reports available so you can see, again, how effective, what are our racial breakouts, uh, number of incident reports, seclusion times, those types of things. And then if we have time, doing some additional um, functionality such as form creation as well. So we're not going to go through all of this in depth. We'll see a lot of this in the actual demo itself, but just a kind of a, a breakdown of what we're providing in the person management. And again, this is the information that's centered on to the youth as well. So important information like documents, educational information, criminal charges, the admission management that includes the areas of incident reports, seclusions, restraints, additional case notes, 
the group management, so knowing who's involved in the groups, who actually participated in the groups. Within those group managements, you, we can create a universal group note. So you're providing one group note for all the youth that are participating in that group, and then also giving you the ability to do an individualized note. And then this gives you a way to break down how many group hours are we actually um, providing or dosage hours, how many hours of treatment does each individual youth actually have in participating. And then most, uh, really the most important part of right Track is the reporting parts as well. So creating these customized reports. Reports are run within right Track, but you can also transfer them to a Word, Excel, or a PDF document. Um, we do reports on what I call table form, so just standard tables, or we also have visual reports as well, and you'll see that when we get to the demo. And then we also do what we call global reports, so what's going on in the entire organization, but we also allow for individual reporting, so you can see what's going on specifically for the uh, youth. And any information that's entered into Right Track is reportable. We provide over about 30 standard reports um, that we feel are more than sufficient to meet most customers' need, but we do recognize that there's some specific reporting that is required for um, auditing purposes or um, um, people are providing you money for grants and those types of things, and so we can always um, provide customizable reports as well. And in doing it by taking the using the information that you're entering and using that information as you're reporting, we're assuring that we have valid and reliable information, valid and reliable data as well. So let's go ahead and get started on the demo. So you can actually see. So because I've been locked out of the system for period of time, this um, has canceled me out of the system, and so we just have to log back in. So what I had mentioned is you log back in, depending on who each uh, you are seeing, you're able to see a dashboard. And that dashboard is unique to each individual person as they log in. And so my dashboard may look a little different than, than your dashboard because depending on what your job responsibilities are, you may want to see different information as well. And so as an administrator, I want to see, uh, in my view, the most important things are who, who are the youth that are in the facility. So this is a list of all the kids that are listed in the facility. And I want to be aware of which youth are on or in room confinements for the time being. And so I have a list of that as well. So that's what I've created as part of my dashboard, just to point out that these seclusion hours, obviously we're using data, uh, dummy data for as part of our demonstration. So, um, but it, it shows the ability to tally your seclusion hours, going back to my story of what we were looking for. In right track, we have the ability to favorite individuals um, that are relevant to you. And so if you're con, um, in charge of a pod, you can favor uh, the youth that are part of your pod. And so while you have access to all the youth in the system, this kind of narrows down your, your, your searching just to make it simpler and easier for you. And so we're gonna use Joe West as our example as we move through the demonstration. And this is what I was talking about as the person module. So this is where we're entering information that's unique just for this youth. In right track, we do a lot of drop-down menus. The advantages of drop-down menus are it simplifies the data collection process. It also makes it more valid and reliable. And so we are not giving the staff the freedom just to put in, um, for example, of race and we don't want staff just to write white. We want them to choose an option such as Caucasian, African-American, whatever the requirements are, may be. Same thing um, 
with appearance and eye color. And so really we're assuring um, data integrity. You can incorporate a picture as part of the documentation as well. And the administrator of the system has the ability to control and make modifications to the drop-down menus. And so if you wanna add specific things or as things change, a good example of this is PREA standards, as they added more um, sexual orientation options, such as questioning, which I think was the newest one, that can be included as part of your drop-down menus um, for your system. But it's not, the, while the drop-downs are available, they can only be uh, customized by the administrator. And so we're, again, going back to that data integrity and ensuring. If we go back to the um, dashboard, you can also access youth through the dashboard as well. So anytime you see a youth name um, in this blue color, it'll take us to Joe West. And so just giving some flexibility within the reporting. So even when we get to the end of the demo, as we're doing reporting, if you had specific information or needed specific information about a youth, you can access their files through the reports as well. Again, really streamlining the process for you as a user. We don't have time to go through every single list here in the tree on the left-hand side, but just wanted to highlight a couple of important pieces of information. I'm gonna pass over the admissions and the incidents because we're gonna get back to those specifically but there's also a calendar feature associated with the youth. And so this is Joe West individual calendar. When we get to the reporting part, you'll also see that there's actually a facility calendar. So it takes all the youth in the facility and puts their appointments and schedules into one calendar as well. If they have court hearings, you can keep track of the dates and times, the types of hearings, even the outcomes and where those are located. Um, again, that becomes part of the facility report. So if we have to make arrangements for transportation and those types of things, it becomes accessible for um, the users as well. You can keep track of assessments. So assessments has become this very important topic in juvenile justice of, of having assessments. And going back to trying to put all the information into one system, RightTrack allows you to take assessments that are done outside of the system and allows you to import those assessments into the system. For this example, um, they're using the OES. And so um, that has been done. And as there's an electronic system that you can use the OES. And so you're able to print that off and import a copy of that printed assessment and store it within RightTrack itself, keeping track of things like, is there a hard copy on file? What was their overall score? What is their identifying risk level? Those types of things as well. We do have some customers who have actually embedded specific risk assessments. Um, so like uh, a criteria for admission assessment, we can include that and embed that as part of your right track system as well. Also keeping track of important information like consents. And so if you require parental permission to administer medications or perform um, simple medical procedures and those types of things, medical consents, you, you can have those signed copies as part of the right track system, allowing you to do simple case notes and keeping a record of who those case notes are. Within the case notes, you will see that you have the person, the creation date, who is created by, any type of, uh, whether it's in the free text or within the notes themselves, there's always spell check that's associated with those documents as well. And so really assuring not only are we doing a good job of keeping track of our notes, but we're allowing them to look as professional as possible. The documents tab is again, where we had used it from the assessments where we can take information from outside of right track and store it within right track. So this is how we can upload pictures as part of the documentation, things like birth certificates, driver's license, any types of outside information as well. And then keeping track of important information. In the alerts tab related to Joe, we have a history of these are kind of what we call our risk factors or important information that we always want staff to be aware of, such as escape history or security risk those types of things. We can even include additional 
um, such as special diet and include that as today's date. And so you'll notice we added the special diet and if we went go back to Joe West's home screen, we scroll down, we can see those alerts and we've added the special diet as well. There's also a start date and an end date. And so if we have kids who are frequent admissions, we know that sometimes issues from two or three years ago aren't, not nece aren't necessarily pertinent now, but are things that are good to always be aware of. Um, and so we can keep track of not only what's currently an issue, but also an, an, an historical perspective of the youth as well. Keeping track of the use charges, so a history of all the charges that they've been adjudicated or um, charged with. Additional information like legal numbers and approving who's for phone approved for the use phone calls and approved for visitation as well. Background information, so what school are they required, they're supposed to be attending, their personal property, and also if you're issuing inventory within the facility itself, and then the treatment. Uh, so Right Track provides a treatment plan for the youth that you can include within Right Track. So for this example, this youth has a drug and alcohol treatment plan, so we can identify the type of treatment plan, the problems that we're trying to address, what are our specific goals, our objectives, and how we're doing our interventions as well. Also, additional information like private or Medicaid insurance, we can also, there's has a documents tab associated with this. And so we can scan a picture of the insurance card and have that as provided as part of our documentation within the system as well. If the nurse wants to keep track of lab tests, so especially, specifically when we're dealing with admissions, if there's a requirement for the youth to have a negative or to get a COVID test, we can keep track of those types of things, the results of those tests, the group functions as well. So in this example, we have the anger management group. And so we can include who are the youth that are required to participate in the anger management, what are the group sessions? And then keeping track within those sessions, who are the youth that participated in those sessions and creating that universal group note that goes through all the session members' records as well. So that's just a breakdown of the uh, the youth, um, really the information that is entered onto the youth. I want to move forward in the admissions part. So this is the day-to-day -day operations of the juvenile facility. And for this example, we can see that Joe West has a number of admissions. And so we want to highlight the most current admission. And this takes us to those day-to-day -day operations within the facility as well. So we can keep track of the charges that are associated with this admission. And so while we have might have a number of charges, there might be specific charges that resulted in that current stay in detention. So associating a specific charge that brought that youth into detention, keeping track of their phone calls. And so we can see that Joe has made phone calls to mom and dad here in the number of weeks. Also keeping track of visitors as well pulling over those assessments from the person, um, saying that, all right, these are the specific assessments. Going back to when we had talked about the de uh, detention pre-screening assessment, that could be something that you would include in this part as well. And the consents, so that becomes part of the use record, keeping track of their property. So this is the information, this is the use property that was brought in, providing a brief description of that property and where that is currently being stored 
and located as well. So things like having their shoes in the locker, but keeping important valuable information such as wallets and cell phones in this safe. There's also a checkout item as well. And so when it's time for release that you can do a checkout and we don't have to go through and check out in each individual item, you can check them out as like a bulk group. Also, if you're issuing inventory within the facility as well, so things like a shower kit or hygiene products, jumpsuits, shower shoes, whatever, if you wanna keep track of that type of information that's available, doing room assignments. And so when we uh, go through the implementation process and we can set up the system to mirror how your building is laid out. So whether it's by units or pods um, or even different buildings, that can become part of your room assignment. So it actually correlates to what's going on in your facility as well. And then again, that becomes that flexibility option. And so if you make changes to how we're identifying buildings or areas, you can make those changes within the right, uh, right track system, keeping track of case notes, and also the documents tab, which takes, again, outside information um, and stores that as part of the use record. So important things like maybe a school IEP, you want that to be part of the use record. That can A copy of that can be included into the right track system as well. So this is really those day-to-day -day operations of a juvenile facility. One of the things that when we get back to our Joe is, well, one of the most important things that occurs in the facility besides the admission and the release is how is the youth behaving? So keeping track of incidents um, for the youth within the facility. And you'll notice that Joe has a number of incidents since he's been with us, but I wanna go through and use this example of a fight that Joe was involved with as an example of how we do incident reports within Right Track. In Right Track, we use what we call global incident reports. The advantage of doing global incident reports are, and a fight is a great example. And so if you have two youth that are involved into a, in a fight, we can agree that most likely, we all know that it occurred at a certain time at a certain location and it involves two youth. So instead of creating multiple incident reports, Right Track allows you to create one incident report and then attach youth to that incident report. Additionally, we can also create an individual incident report. So we can create one just for Joe West, but if we have an incident report that involves multiple youth, and in turn, multiple staff, we can create one incident report and just add the staff notes to that, add the youth that were involved in that as part of this. And so this will give you a little bit example or visualize what we're talking about. And so we have this example of there was a fight between two kids at the facility. We can document who are the staff members that responded to that fight. And so we have three staff members that all responded to this. In the course of the fight, we had to do a physical restraint. And so there we can document the restraint type, even the types of methods. And this is important, especially when we get into training. So if you have specific training, such as a C grip or an arm bar or whatever type of specific training that we're teaching our staff, we can, we can incorporate that as part of our documentation, um, really showing compliance to policy procedures, those types of things as well. The seclusions. So for this example, after the fight, Joe was placed in room confinement for a couple hours just for a period to cool off. And so we're able to track those seclusion hours, but also identifying a why and, and the types of responses that we were having. Going back to our staff. So we had our three staff members that were responding. And now those three staff members can put in their notes. And so again, uh, just putting a title, the creation date, the type of note. Um, again, all of these are edited fields. They include things like spell check. Um, as, and also spell checks available kind of in those free flowing parts of the text as well. Then the documents tab. 
And so now we can start incorporating documents that are related to the incident report. And so in this example of the fight, Joe, after the fight or during the fight, got punched in the face. And so he has a black eye. And so if we want to take a picture of that and incorporate that as part of the incident report, we can incorporate picture documentation as part of that. We can even include video documentation. So videos are a little larger file, so it'll take just a few moments to load that up. But we can include video documentation as part of our filing. So in my system, when I was a director and we were just doing a paper-based system, I had to scan a copy of the video onto a disk and then attach with a paper clip that disk onto the paper incident report. And, you know, a very ineffective way of managing my incident reports and managing the data. You know, I I was I was hopeful for that a paper clip was keeping everything together. So really putting all that information, really streamlining uh, and improving not only the data management process, but also the, 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 the data entry process as well. And then this is what we were talking about for the participants. And so we developed an incident report based off of a fight, but really it's very important to say, well, who are the two kids that were involved in this fight? And so for this example, we have Joe West and Bobby Smith. So if we went to Bobby Smith, we would see the incident report that we're referring to, this fight with peers. We'll go back to Joe West and finish up on the incident report. We also allow for a review as well. And so if there are specific incidents that require supervisors review um, you can include those supervisors review as part of your documentation of the incident report so if there is a restraint or a room confinement was that justifiable the the supervisor sign off this allows for the supervisor to make note his notes based off of his review what his observations recommendations were as well this would be an example of security um, as an administrator, I would have access to the reviews. Maybe as a line staff person, those would be hidden for me because those are things we just want to keep um, on an administrative level as well. So I've given you a breakdown of not only how right track works from a person module of entering the information onto the youth, but also how it works with the admissions also, in addition to that, how we're doing the incident reports, the room confinements, the restraints as well. And so in the time remaining, I really want to spend the remaining time focusing on the uh, reporting, what we're providing from a reporting standpoint within RightTrack as well. And so here's a list of all the reports that we're able to provide for you within RightTrack. And we're not going to we don't have time and we're not going to go through every report, but I just wanted to point out some of the uh, important reports that I think are available to you. And so we have this active alerts, which takes all the alerts in the facility for all the youth and puts them into a single document. So you can kind of get a, a snapshot going back to, you know, this might be a, a, a report that you want as part of your dashboard, uh, especially if you're a nurse or a supervisor keeping line staff as well, but keeping track of that uh, important information as well. Also for reporting purposes, we often need to know what are the committing charges uh, for the youth that are in our facility. And so we've broken this down into a report for the youth that are currently in. These are the charges that are associated. It gives you this table that I, was, I had talked about in the PowerPoint. But it also breaks it down into this visual, um, you know, this pie chart for you as well. So you can get a breakdown of seeing the aggravated assaults, the number of disorderly conducts, uh, weapons charges, those types of things as well. As a director, you want to know the admission, who's currently in my facility as right now, and what type of kids am I dealing with in my facility? And so here's a list of all the kids that are currently in the facility, the types of admissions, 
when their admission started, the number of days of admission, where they're located, date of birth, what's their average age, what's the racial breakdown, how many males or females do I have, those types of things as well. And this is a current snapshot of, of what's going on today but we can also provide a historical perspective for you as well. You also wanna be aware of what your discharge, discharge statistics are. And so we'll see, well, we haven't had any discharges um, in the month of March, but if we go back, we can see, all right, these are the kids that were in our facility and that were released from the facility, the types of admissions, what the reason, how many days they were in the facility as well. One of the other reports we provide is the incidents by staff. So this gives us a breakdown of what staff were involved in what incident reports. And why this becomes where this becomes important is um, keeping track of which staff, how many times is a certain staff member involved in a restraint or maybe room confinements? Do we have some issues that maybe staff is a little overzealous or a little too passive? And do we need to address that? Um, I apologize, it's a little glitch that, that wasn't working. Um, one of the questions that I often get is, well, Steve, this is fantastic. We're able to enter all this information, but this is only going to be successful if I rely on my staff to enter that information. And how do we assure that they're entering the most important information? Well, we have a report for that. We have this missing juvenile data report. This gives you a breakdown of all the kids that are currently in the facility and that you have determined as an administrator is required. You know, every kid that comes in, we should know what their height and weight is because that's part of the intake process. Um, maybe a kid doesn't know his social security number, but we need to find that out. And so this gives a breakdown of really important but required information that needs um, entered into the system as well. If you're in charge of a facility that could have numerous pods, and so you don't necessarily need the entire population if you're supervising for example, pod A, you can get a breakdown of, okay, these are the kids that are currently in pod A. These are the kids that I'm going to be supervising and need to be aware of. I can see what their charges are. I can also get a breakdown of their alerts. So these are the, you know, are there certain kids that I need to pay special attention to? Um, are there certain areas of alerts that might be indicators of, of, of problematic behaviors? Uh, what their admission date was, how long have they been in the facility, even if they have a court hearing coming up and how many days have they been in the facility within that specific room. Because we often know that one kid can change the whole milieu of a unit. And so oftentimes we're moving kids from one unit to another. I had showed you, <clears throat> excuse me, we had talked about the, uh, Joe West individual schedule as well. In this example, this is talking about taking the facility schedule. So this is all the kids that are in the facility and putting them into one schedule as well. Within the report, you'll notice that we see a lot of this information where you're able to create columns or choose which information you wanna see. So for here, you may say, all right, I only wanna see um, calls, lab history, and visits. I don't care about court hearings right now. And so we can take that part out, um, refresh that report and say, I'm only seeing the visitation parts now. There's no current labs or any visits. But in this example, it says, no, I wanna see everything. And so we have flexibility in that reporting as well. Same thing if you wanted to do it by staff. And so if staff wanted to log in, if you were in charge of transportation and say, well, I only want to see the kids that I'm responsible for transporting that specific day, you can uh, make those kind of filtering options available within the reports as well. One of the things I had missed out on is um, you also 
change your column visibility. And so for this example, if we want to take out the uh, youth name for the youth in admission, because this is a report that's uh, maybe being released to a funding provider and we need to give age and gender and those types of things, but we want to hide the kids in uh, confidential information, such as their names, um, we can remove that part of the report as well. Any report that's run within right track can be transferred out to an, an Excel document, a PDF. And so we're taking the same report that was being run within right track, and now we've made it as an Excel document as well. Gives you some flexibility to do some data manipulation or changes, columns and those types of things within the system as well. In the PowerPoint, I had talked about not only are we providing tables as part of our reporting as well, but we also have visual reports as well. And so we have this facility map room, which really takes us and says, okay, this is the breakdown of the units. And this shows me who are the kids visually that are in the units and what visual rooms do I see that are vacant as well? And so again, going back to our example of oftentimes we have to change kids, we can see a visual perspective of this as well, uh, especially if we're dealing with multiple pods in, in um, for, within a single building, keeping track of important information like the restraints. And so this just gives us a breakdown for this month's restraint, but let's go back and pull additional data. Go ahead and refresh that report. And so now that gives me a breakdown of all the restraints that have occurred since August of last year. The type of restraint, when it was, uh, the reason, the location. And so this gives us evaluation to say, okay, is there a tendency that we're getting having to do more restraints that occurred in the gym because kids maybe we're not supervising gym activities the way that we should or maybe we need to have additional staff observing the kids within the gym as well so it gives us a breakdown of restraints by location also a type of restraints or the reason for the restraints and so for this example, it's because it was prevent runaway or harmful to others, whatever the other identifiers that we are including as well. Again, those are pulled from the drop-down menu. So if you're doing what I call restraint class or, or incident report classification, so maybe minor incident reports or group one and majors or group two, which is how we did those in our facility, um, we can start differentiating how many group one offenses did we have, how many group two offenses did we have, how many group ones resulted in a restraint, and why did that happen versus uh, group twos, those kind of kind of data evaluation and deep diving um, within their within your right track system as well. Also including seclusions. So really doing an evaluation of seclusions, how many total seclusion hours do we have? What's the current status? What is the reason? And so this can become part of it. And again, um, this is all data, dummy data. So obviously we have problems if a kid's in seclusion for that number of hours. But going down here to that example of um, an incident that I just entered recently um, that we're keeping track of this seclusion hours. So if our policy and procedures are, we have to do, um, reclassification or or reassessment of seclusion hours after two hours after four hours now we have that running record that we can check that as well for some customers we've even included notifications as part of that seclusion so if after two hours there has to be a reevaluation of that seclusion there's a reminder that's sent to an administrator or a supervisor that says hey in 15 minutes the kid will be in seclusion for this number of hours, we have to be aware that we need to start that reassessment as well. Finally, I had showed you the global reporting as well, but just as we wrap things up, we also can do the individual reporting. And so this is going to be reports specifically involving on Joe West. So how many seclusion hours has Joe West been involved with? 
um, and it gives a breakdown not only of the dates, but also the most recent seclusion hours as well. Who is approved to visit for Joe West? This goes back to that visual graph that I had showed you as well. So we have Joe's biological mom and dad, but recently we included a pastor because um, they were approved to come and visit them. A global note search saying, so this is all the notes that were associated with Joe West. And we can also filter those notes and just say, I just need to see the nurse's notes. And this is an example of where we can create templates within right track itself. And so we can create things like a template for their first name, their last name, things like date of birth. Um, so if we need to create um, universal forms or specific forms for the use, we can take a lot of the information that's already associated in right track and include that as part of our templates for form creation as well. And then finally, the audit log. And this is available not only for an individual, but it's also available um, throughout the entire system as well. So it gives an administrator the ability to see who was in the right track system and what they were doing and what changes or information was entered or changes made to the system. And so it gives you a breakdown of today, I was in the system, I was inserting information, it was in this area, and this was the information that was changed. Any information that's entered into right track is edible by an administrator. And in addition, the administrator also has access to recover information as well. So if somebody should accidentally delete any information, um, the administrator can go back in and recover that. So I had said 45 minutes, I'm two minutes over. For that, I apologize. I do want to thank you so much for participating in this webinar. I hope I was able to give you just a really brief overview of what we're providing in Right Track. Oftentimes people, you know, I'm trying to whip through this as quickly as I can and give you as much information as possible. And oftentimes people will say, we, I want to do a deeper dive on some things as well. So feel free if there's specific information that you would like for us to do a deeper dive on, feel free as part of that survey at the end here in just a moment. If you want to include that as one of the questions, I'd be more than happy to reach out to you. We can set up additional personal demonstrations online as well. I did notice here, we do have one question. Um, they had asked, are signatures able to be included as part of right track? Yes, in the standard platform, we do not include signatures, but we have done a number of customizations, including signatures. So if you have a checklist that a youth is able, has to receive the rules of the facility, you know, what the requirements are, how to access the counselor if needed, those types of things, those checkoffs, um, those can be incorporated within right track and we can incorporate a signature tab within right track so the youth and the staff can sign off same thing for things like incident reports and case notes as well if you wanted um, signatures as part of that information so i'm going to go ahead and wrap up i do want to show you real quickly this is my contact information if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me give me a call send me an email um, our time is and so I want to be respectful of your time and let you go. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I really appreciate your interest and look forward to hopefully speaking with some of you again. In the meantime, have a great day and enjoy the upcoming weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.